What's up, guys? Welcome to the Matt Beck Show. This is August second. I got Thad Bull and Eyes with me. What's up, dude? Not too much. Well, actually, there was a lot that's been up, but like nothing yeah. like this show. Nothing related. you want to go over right I now. Mean, if you wanted to go down with my July, that was like slam packed. We can, but we don't need to. <laughs> well, we've been live since July, but you did have a big weekend. I did. I so did. I found out that I can camp still. Yeah, tell me about this. So I haven't heard anything about your camping trip because we just ran into each other right now. But right. you went away for the weekend into the woods. Yeah, like, like like actual camping, actual camping. Like and when I say actual camping, I mean like we didn't just pull up to our campsite and unload the uh, the jeep. Right. We parked the jeep on this shady trail that was like made of gravel and dirt right by the cliff. I was actually a little worried that uh, I was going to come back and find out that there was a mudslide and my jeep was at the bottom of, of the hill. Okay. And that we were going to have to do jeep things to get it back. Up the hill. Cheap things? Cheap things. Okay. Um, so, but is this a trip you would recommend to people? Because... Oh, hands down. I don't know how many people camp out there, but... Oh, I would definitely recommend it, but, like, just know that, like, you don't get a cell phone signal about, like, two miles away from, like, the road that you take to get in, and yeah. then you hike two to three miles into the site. How'd that go without awesome. a cell phone? Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, it, it was, like, one of those that, like came back feeling super recharged super refreshing you look recharged we, we, we camped uh right in between two creeks where two creeks meet so we were at the inside part of the v okay to the right of us was a uh like a cove and then to the left of us was a waterfall going into uh, the lower creek oh nice. So that was pretty awesome yeah <laughs> okay so we um so we missed you while you were gone. We did a, f- a video shoot with Paul I Mitchell. I know. Uh, I'm excited to hear about that. <laughs> yeah, so the shoot was good. Um, we had Colin Caruso and Noogie Tai um, out doing color and style videos. So that was really fun. And both of them are awesome. Like uh, like Colin and his color and Noogie and his style. And like, yeah. I'm, we're not style guys. And we've talked about how we like watching him. <laughs> yeah, we got a lot of style tips that day. So it was really cool um, having them in the studio. Oh, oh, hold on. Anyone what? else having an uh, issue listening and people might be having some people just have different phones and have issues uh, but hopefully guys let us know if you can't hear uh that well but there's always somebody that can't will it uh, still be recording uh just in case it's still recording yeah okay. so um all right so we have some great questions um from some uh people on instagram uh and also a little bit of facebook questions as well i thought you were gonna um, go we have some great questions from some great people <laughs> No. For, just once yeah. I would like to hear somebody say, we have some great question from some okay people. Yeah, <laughs> right. So we, uh, so let's just start off. We'll, we'll kick off the questions um, and then, and we'll go from there. So first question is from Beauty Hive by Nicole. Uh, she says, do you have any suggestions for new guest consultations before an appointment? I've had issues with clients online booking and miss booking appointments because they think it's one thing, but it's actually another. So, so I, I know that, you had an opinion on this a little bit. So do you want to? Yeah, my opinion, I don't like the concept of online booking. Like we have online requests, which are great because it allows people to request an appointment online. Yeah. But if you're going to do online booking, like I would almost see if like the company that you're working with has a feature where like they have to be a previous client. Right. And you have a disclaimer that's like pops up in the actual appointment thing, like like where it says like your name here. Have like if you book this appointment, there are no, there might not be add-ons. Like we might not be able to add additional services or some some right. site type of disclaimer, because we've had people who call up who are clients who say I'm calling for a color and a haircut, and yeah, what they and mean they, is a full head of balayage, right? Root touch up and a haircut. So yeah, if, I like agree. I, I I know her problem is. Somebody might call up saying, I'm looking for a single color and then maybe see cleanup. Right. And like they think that a cleanup is just a trim when actually it's just going around the haircut of a short haircut uh, along the neckline. Right. So then they, they've booked an hour and 45 minutes when they really need like two and a half, three hours. And right. And that's just not happening if yeah. you're fully booked on a Friday or a Saturday. So, yeah. So that's, that's my thought as well. But I... I think with your online booking, you put simple services in there, but then also have um, it written out. If you would like, like they can't book highlights online. They can't book, if you want to book a haircut, maybe that. We don't do online booking at the salon. The reason for that is exactly what you're saying. We do um, book consultations before. I know last week um, we actually had uh, a guest call in and she 
she wanted her kid wanted to have like a uh, rainbow he has really long hair and he wants rainbow colors in his hair and you, you don't know how long that's going to take so we right. didn't even book the appointment we mm-hmm. booked a consultation and then we're bringing him in we're going to talk to him we're going to talk about price we're going to talk about time all of that stuff goes into mm-hmm. play so i think that it's most important to to even if online booking is just booking consultations you know right. like make that happen plus have an online request like we have so you can request what you want and then we'll talk to you about it and we'll get you booked there's no reason why you should make it convenient online for people to book things right absolutely or at least get the word out that they want it because they're going to be online and some other salon is going to have online booking and then you're going to miss out because they're going to go book with that salon because you didn't offer that i think that you need something like it like we have with demand force we can get an appointment request in we can text them back we can email them back there's all different uh types of ways that we can reach mm-hmm. out to them but they can't actually put an appointment in our book um, we have to call and, and take care of yeah. that and i mean like at the end of the day you can't eliminate all confusion because right. even with the online request we have people who make an online request and don't realize that it's a request. Yeah, like, even they that think they booked it. Yeah, yeah. They, they, they think that they've booked an appointment at Wednesday at 2. Like, we've had, like, I think maybe, like, one person come in, and they're like, oh, well, I had an appointment at 2. Yeah, I was going to say, I would say that's a lot less than yeah. if we allowed them oh, to actually put absolutely. it. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. Right. <laughs> yeah. I can only imagine the headaches that you go through by allowing them to book the appointment. All right, cool. So, uh, so Nicole, I hope that helps you. Uh, so, Jay... McKinta, I'm guessing is, I actually don't know how to say his last name, but he's been following us forever. Um, I should ask him that like personally when I see him. Um, hi, Matt. I'll try to join you live, but in case I don't, my question is, hopefully you're on live. Um, my Have question we- is, when will you be holding your next class? Now that I'm back in NYC, I would love to do to make the drive over. Oh, cool. Next class is actually tomorrow. Are you ready? Yeah. Just kidding. Just um, kidding. <laughs> we haven't booked any classes because we are opening the new salon. Um, we have been opening the new salon for a while. So our number one priority is getting that open. Uh, hopefully that will be open soon. Uh, we're waiting on some approval stuff. And then once the salon is running and we're good, then we'll start scheduling out the classes. So I'm hoping Sometime before the end of the year, we'll have another class, but it may be beginning of next year. That's really far off the list of things, even though I love hosting the classes and having people here. The problem is we uh, we do so many classes online. We're doing so many videos and we're putting out so much stuff. It's hard to take an entire day to have a class. So we will. Um, and I also want to have the whole team involved in those classes. So there will be a lot more of that kind of thing next year for sure. Hopefully the end of this year. He also has one more question. Did you want to? Uh, I was just going to say for all of you out there, write to our That'll local. That'll do a class. He's <laughs> uh, write to our local uh, legislator and yeah. tell him that you want FSC open faster. Yes. Yeah, that would be great. <laughs> State board, if you could help us out, that um, would be Somebody awesome. also says that they can only hear you talking. Uh, so uh, I've also you. decided that you're censoring me. Yeah. I actually wrote that up there. I said, ah, Matt's censoring me. Only hear me talking. Um, why don't you turn your, well, let's not mess with it because I got to edit it later. Okay. So okay. just talk louder. If you can. <laughs> um, all right. Right, right. So he has another question. Um, one more question is, do you have any, uh, any chance you could have the people from Pivot Point on the show to explain the process of making their mannequins? Uh, I think that would be interesting. It is interesting. Um, I love I love the process of making the mannequins. Now, here's the thing. I actually, because of your question, brought this little guy that has no hair, so this doesn't show you anything. I was going to say that, but, that that's like one way of like, like change. Like, like that's an option for a mannequin, but I wouldn't say that that's how they, they make mannequins. This is not how they make them. But this also is the snap cap um, head, which I'll see if I can show it closer. So this is the snap cap head that... This removes, and you can just replace the hair. You don't have to replace the head. First off, that's a lot better on the environment and throwing away everything and all of that. But the other thing about yeah, Pivot the Point other ones use styrofoam. is this little tag on it that says SAI compliant. Um, it's basically it's a standard established by SAI and one of the world's uh, preeminent social standards. It's a tool for implementing 
uh, international labor standards to protect workers along each step of the supply chain. This is the thing. This is the reason I use pivot point mannequins because they go through all of the steps to make sure that the way that the mannequins are being made is um, not by paying workers super cheap wages and um, you know and and getting around everything that way. That's why their mannequins are a little bit more expensive. But also they're done by basically artists that hand put in each hair into the head. So that's the kind of thing that where um, sometimes when you buy a cheaper mannequin, it's all of a sudden just shot up in the in the front because they have a machine that just places everything in there in one direction all the way back. So um, at Pivot Point, they'll place it the way that the hair would normally fall and grow, and that's why you have more success cutting these mannequins as opposed to oop, um, as opposed to the the cheaper mannequins out there. So it would be a really cool video. I believe that I I had um, some pivot point people on a podcast once talking about it, mm -hmm. but um, maybe I didn't. So uh, I'll see if I can look that up. If I find it, I'll repost it. If not, we'll try to get pivot point wants to come out here and see the studio. So I'm sure eventually we'll get them on here to talk about everything. Um, oh man, I just closed. Okay, good. Everything seemed good so far? Yeah, I accidentally hit the home button, and I was like, damn it, now I'm going to have to figure out how to get back to your page. Well, here's the other thing, too. So I've been editing this now, uh, starting last week, editing it right away to put it on iTunes. Mm -hmm. So people don't have to watch us. They can just listen Oh, that's cool. If they that's want. cool. So, um, so if you guys want to, there'll be an edited version of the audio portion of this on iTunes. So you guys can listen to it. Uh, just look up Free Salon Education on iTunes podcasts. Um, all right. Last question is Ryan Teal. Um, I think Ryan probably has, Ryan's our friend. He's been on the show. He was just on a couple weeks ago. Um, I think this question is probably more in general because I'm sure he has a lot of opinions about this as well. But his question is, how do you and, you, uh, and or the professional hairdressing community feel about the new Amazon direct shipping of salon products pro equals product prices will be regulated Amazon wide, meaning no undercutting, which I agree with, uh, the hair salon prices, and con, it's driving sales from the salon to the internet. It's like the Uber or Airbnb of hairdressing. So um, so basically what Ryan's saying is Amazon has a whole salon section now. They have Amazon Salon or something. Okay. Um, and what it is, it, professional products and manufacturers are now selling directly through Amazon. Okay. So... Um, my f initial thought is it's inevitable. It's going right. to happen. The pro, like what we have against Am like, so everybody got upset because CVS and Walgreens and all these different companies started selling professional products, right? Mm -hmm. Diversion, that whole thing came out. Um, manufacturers trying to fight it. Now no one's trying to fight it. Everyone's just saying, yes, we do. We yeah, sell. Yep, yep. Um, we, 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 well, I don't want to say that because we don't know who is. Yeah, but. exactly. So... Um, but it's more like, I, I understand why company, you, the sales channel through salons is probably great. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't sell products. It's probably great. But the sales channel through big corporate companies is, is huge as well. Oh, yeah. So, like if I was L'Oreal, if I was like Devin as, uh, did I say that correctly this time? Yeah, Devin as, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, all the other like companies, like I would be wanting my product out there in all many like, like in all forms so i mean like yeah it sucks for us but like we got to talk to our clients and exactly right have our clients trust us that we know what's gonna be best for their hair and like like yeah, you like can't, talk to them yeah <laughs> you can't be upset about um like your client going to a store to buy it when you have the the entire ear of your client for two hours when they come in right. to talk to them about the products that you have and they can buy. Now, you know? I, I have had clients who like I've talked to them and I've said, hey, this is what we've used on your hair. This is why I've used it on your hair. This is how you use it on your hair. Yeah. And they say, OK, well, I'd like to go uh, go home and like see like how I like my hair later on that day. Right. I'll either be back or I'll check on Amazon. Yep. And at that point, you're just like, <clears throat> Yeah. Like, cause like at that point you can't do anything about it. Like, like you did all that you can do. Yeah. And so. honestly, I mean, we have to look at, obviously retail is a, a, a big thing for a salon, mm -hmm. uh, for a salon owner for sure. Um, but it's, 
it's not the end all thing. Like we have to come up with new creative ways. We have to advance as well. The yeah. the industry is advancing. It's becoming more online. There's nothing you can do about it. The great thing is they can't get their treatments, deep conditioning treatments. They can't sit under hot lamps. They can't do, there's a lot of other things that we can do. Like um, the Paul Mitchell product, Colorcraft that just came out. Yep. Like you can't order Colorcraft on the I mean, internet, you, you probably can order color you crap, can. but you're going to get just the conditioning part, right? Or at least exactly. Or so, there's going to be some funky colors. And to explain to you guys that don't know what color craft is out there, it's a and there's other companies that have it as well, similar you know products, but it's a it's a treatment, a conditioning treatment, and then the hairdresser applies pigment to it yeah, and that allows you to customize whatever so you overlay it over your guests you do a professional application in the salon it's different it's more pigment then you send them home with less a uh, less pigment version of it but mm-hmm. it helps them maintain it that is something you can't you can't get over yeah. amazon i mean at the end of the day you could also like, like if you're really really struggling like really struggling you can talk to your your client oh i don't know you as a business owner might have a, a better way of spending this but basically buy local like type deal buy yeah. small business like yeah you can get this uh this wax on amazon yeah um i'll say ruzel because i know ruzel's on amazon yeah um you can get ruzel on amazon but it's the same price from me and you know me right like i, I think tommy boy's uh the whole movie tommy boy was based on that was yeah that you can buy big corporate or you can buy from me um, I think that they were charging more for their brake pads, but <laughs> yeah, but. well, and, and this is the thing too. And that's what Ryan was saying. If Amazon now has regulated pricing, mm-hmm. then when you look up the product on Amazon and it's the same price as it is in the salon, then you're not battling with that whole thing. Like you're not right. battling with Amazon prime and it's cheaper than you have it. You're just battling with the fact that you know, they can conveniently get it from their couch if they want to. Right. But they can conveniently get it from you where you were recommending mm-hmm. it. And make sure you have a good return policy because a lot of manufacturers have great, re- like distributors have great return policies. If your client doesn't like the product, right. you should be able to just quickly take it back from your guest, return it, give them something else that you recommend so that they're not searching the internet for a hair product. I really don't think... I, I know that it's big business buying hair products online, mm-hmm. but I really think that people are better off listening to their hairdresser if their hairdresser is actually knowledgeable about hair right. products. The right. problem is the majority, not saying that people that are watching this show, but the majority of, uh, there's a lot of hairdressers, there's millions of hairdressers, yeah. right? So they're not all studying up and right. becoming educated and really talking about products. They're talking about all this other stuff while they're behind the chair. So they're wasting their time and then they're complaining about Amazon and complaining. I don't have a complaint about Amazon because first off, I know you guys are talking about product. Right. If they go to Amazon and buy it after you've talked to them about it for forever, it is what it is. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm already thinking about how do we advance it? We do things like color craft. We do things like... So now the question for me is if Amazon's allowed to sell it online, are we allowed to? Are we able to have a section on our website? That, we are now. That that says, okay, Thad's my stylist. I want Ruzel. Please ship it to me. Well, we're allowed to. So even companies. So we sell Paul Mitchell in the salon. That's the only reason I I keep referencing it. But Paul Mitchell, a long time ago, you could not sell right. products online right. on your website. Right. Now it's different. Okay. Now you can if cool. you want to. Um, I still don't shipping hairspray and doing all of that is not, that's why everybody's going to Amazon. Like even distributors don't want to ship hairspray it sounds like anymore. It, it sounds like it's like asking for a headache because like I yeah. think of how many times like people come back to the salon with like that their hairspray is clogged or that little, yeah. that little cap broke. I can only imagine like shipping that like and right. finding out how many of those come back. But think about the advancements of like different products. Like you have Olaplex mm-hmm. where you can do those kind of treatments in the salon, right. things that you couldn't do before. Right. Um, you have keratin treatments that you can do in the salon. Not the big, crazy, stinky ones, but like, you know, like the the quick 10 minute ones that are mm-hmm. things that they're not doing at home on themselves. Yeah. Um, you know, up your game that way. Uh, and then you have companies, uh, again, we're talking about Paul Mitchell because like we use it in the salon. Yeah. But then you have companies who are going to help you battle that as well with creating color craft. Right. 
like you said, like color craft is going to add pigment. Like, so you can, if you have a redhead, you add red to the leave in conditioner. Yeah. Or not, it's not leave in, it's, it's a deep conditioner. It's a deep right? conditioner. Yeah. So you add red to the deep conditioner. So it's refreshing your redheads while they're at home. Right. They can't just order that on Amazon. Right. <laughs> So, well, because you're customizing the pigment, so you're saying, well, I'm going to put this much pigment in it because she's got dark red hair or light red hair, and then you're selling that $40 conditioner. And if they're going to be coming in to buy with that. With pigment in it that they can maintain throughout until their next visit so their hair doesn't fade. Yeah. Like, those are, you know, it's a, it's a great thing. Let me turn it there. We're going to have to reset them all. So here's, here's the question to everybody out there because – this conversation should not stop here. It's, it shouldn't be just me and dad's opinion. So what is your thoughts on Amazon uh, selling hair products? What are you doing to counteract it? I would love to continue that conversation. Post in the comments below. Um, if you're listening to this on iTunes, then go to our Facebook page and post in the comments below as well. Also, um, we'll be, and then we'll re- We'll kind of re-talk about it next week because I'd like to yeah I'd like to I'd continue like to, like, this kind of conversation off, yeah, yeah I'd like to expand off of like what people comment on yeah uh, with this one because this is like an initial thought this is my initial thoughts on it I'll think about it for the week see what we're doing we're gonna meet back here every or Wednesday or we should all write angry letters to Amazon to see if they'll take it off uh, their their their, uh, <laughs> their <happen>. list <laughs> but they'll get a lot of angry letters <laughs> right <laughs> Let's so see. I mean that's pretty much it uh, what time is it yep. Time to do hair. Time to do hair. So follow Thad. Thad Bolonized. Thad Bolonized. Also follow his Facebook page if you want to. You're on Facebook. Type it in right now. Yep. Thad Bolonized uh, on Facebook. Oh, nice. Yep. Good job. Yep. Facebook.com slash Thad Bolonized. Probably. We still don't know how to spell it, though. Thad Boland. Boland. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. So thank you guys so much for watching the show. Follow us everything at Free Salon Education. Also, um, this is why I need follow t-shirts. us on YouTube. And I did just put out um, another color video. So I've done two weeks. So I- I'm uh, running Olaplex's YouTube channel. Yep. And now I've I've made it. Um, it's the Matt Beck takeover. To where? Yeah. So we're taking it over. We're gonna have different artists on it and everything. But I've posted two videos in the last two weeks. We're going to post a video every single Tuesday. So go check them out. A um, couple of really cool color videos. Live models, not mannequins, which is another thing. So I said, all right, Olaplex, I'll do this. And uh, and I'm going to bring live models. Because cool. normally I'm a mannequin guy, but whatever. <laughs> so uh, go check that out. Thank you guys so much for watching the show. And again, we'll be here next Wednesday morning as well. So thank you guys for watching. We'll see you on the next show.